Blog Talk Radio. All right, good evening. Shalom, family. Shalom. Shalom. So, we have we have come to a beginning a beginning of Israel, true Israel's resurrection. Um, we have the celebrities now, uh, a celebrity now, calling Revelation 2-9 and 3-9 people out. We have a Enorm, an, an enormous amount of social media people, in particular on TikTok and Instagram, that are also calling out Revelation 2.9 and 3.9 people. Now, see, this is extremely important for us to understand the times that we're in because we weren't able to read. We were not able to read. I'm going to say that again because people forget these things, you know. We're only talking 70 years ago, 80 years ago, you know. We were not able to read. They did not want us to read. And now today, many of us are reading. Many more of us are reading than have ever read before. We have um, brothers and sisters on every continent speaking up, speaking out, and saying it loud that they're Israel and they're proud. Now, that pride or, or that proudness is not boastfulness, and it's not based on the on the same pride of the Gentiles' um, pride of wickedness. The pride of Israel is to know, to even know, because for so long we didn't know. So when you learn who you are the first time, or when you grow up and you learn, oh, you're from Europe or you're from Africa and you can and you actually have a distinct awareness of where your your family, your people are from, then that provides a sense of pride. It's not a negative pride. It is a it is an enriching and enlightening enlightening enlightenment pride. And why is this important? Because we have to realize that we're st- we are, you know, although although there's there's been many of us that have been been speaking about this for a long time, it is just such a pleasure and such a a fascination at this point to see other of our people starting to truly wake up and connect some dots. And the first dots that they're going to connect, because when you learn who you are, it has to go against other people who say they are. Okay, time that you realize, oh, well, you know what, we're Israel, then that would mean that somebody else is not who says they are as Revelation 2, 9, 3, 9 state. But that's just the beauty of where we are. That's the beauty of the times that we're in. That's the grace, mercy, majesty that we get because, again, it's our turn. It's our time. And, you know, I, I, I say cleave to Israel, but, you know, that's the father's job. Father's going to decide who's going to cleave to Israel, who's going to be part of Israel and who's not. Like, that ain't going to have nothing to do with us. Individually, I mean. The, the, the beauty, again, of it all is the knowledge of knowing because, again, Hosea tells us, and Hosea tells us, you know, we were destroyed for lack of knowledge. So if we were destroyed for lack of knowledge and now all of a sudden we're getting knowledge, then that's a joy. That's beauty. 
And there's a lot of people who don't want us to have this knowledge because us not having knowledge would mean that they continue to be in the position that they're in. And that those days are over. Excuse me, those days are over. So let, let's let's read two nine first. Oh no 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 no. Let's not do that. Let's do. Let's start with Brother D'Angelo on YouTube, Black Rooster, aka. He uh, he hit me to this, and and this is interesting. Afro Asiatic. Because we're going to talk about this for a second. Afro-Asiatic, relating to or denoting a family of languages spoken in the Middle East and North Africa. The family is commonly divided into five groups. Semitic, Ometic, oh, 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 yeah, oh, oh, Ometic, Berber, Cushetic, Shadic. Ancient Egyptian was also a member of this family. See, none of this, none, none of that is saying Europe. These are all African, so to speak, places. Now, we're talking Afro-Asiatic, so of course it's going to, it's going to uh, be more prevalent in Africa, okay? But that doesn't mean that these Afro-Asiatics were not elsewhere, okay, so to speak, all right? So let's go to Semitic. Now, that was Afro-Asiatic. It's talking about Semitic people, right? Semitic, relating to or denoting a family of languages that includes Hebrew, Arabic, Aramaic, and certain ancient languages such as Phoenician, Akkadian, constituting the main subgroup of the Afro-Asiatic family, relating to the people's who speak Semitic languages, especially Hebrew and Arabic, okay? So what's the point? Afro-Asiatic. So when a certain celebrity gets up and starts discussing what he's saying, and he's saying, he can, you know, there are black Jews, so to speak, black. I don't know about that word, but there are Israelite Jews, right? Then it's true. There's no lie in that. There's absolutely unequivocally no lie in that. None whatsoever. None. So for this is this is why it's very interesting to me, and this is why I'm talking about it tonight because it's interesting because there's a lot more people that are coming out and say because uh, I mean like two, three, maybe four years ago, you know, the same celebrity would say something and people laugh. You know, scoffing, I ain't messing with him. He's stupid, he's stupid, he's dumb, he's dumb, he's a coon, he's a coon, whatever. But isn't it just like the father? (laughs) Isn't it just like the father to use the person or the being who everyone hates to bring forth the truth? Isn't it like the father to do that? So I had to consider that. I had to consider that because I was like, man, I, this dude is a joke. This dude, and then I was like, well, you know, I didn't, I didn't go online and post nothing crazy. I didn't, I didn't even. That was just me and my thoughts and my spirit. I was saying this dude's crazy, but and not crazy based on what he was saying. Just overall, just you know, he's off. You know, whatever. And I've been thinking that for a long time. And um, today I started listening to. What he was saying, I said, I, I, I need to, this is the first thing that occurred to me that I considered. The spirit came to me and said, you know what, you, you got to consider this. So hold your tongue before you hear and consider. I said, all right, so I start considering, I start listening to what he was saying. I start finding out what he was saying. And you know what, I mean, I don't, honestly, I don't, I don't have any I don't have any disagreements with them to some degree on a majority of it. I can't say that I agree 100% on everything that he says, and I'm not going to go into everything that he says. But I'm going to say that I cannot not agree with him on certain things. So, you know, then it dawned on me, shoot, I need to consider that the Father is using everybody at this time to bring forth the resurrection of Israel. 
I mean, who am I to say that who who is and who isn't or who or what is or what isn't or or how it is to be or how it's not to be? That's not for me. I I am to consider all things at this point. I would be a fool, an absolute fool, to not consider all things. Why? Because I, we, have been destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So the one thing that we should always consider is knowledge. We should, you know, that doesn't mean that we need to be considering what these Gentiles are saying. No. But we should consider what our people are saying. We should listen to them now. All, Even the ones that we wrote off, we should start to listen to them because the Father is doing a miraculous work amongst his people. And he's not going to do it by way of, you know, somebody that we all can agree on or look look to, uh, especially in the celebrity or the television format or platform. He's not going to do it that way. And, he, and I can say it emphatically because he hasn't done it that way. It's just not been done until now, which is why I'm even discussing this. You know, so, you know, Again, we're talking Semitic, Semitism, which, to be honest with you, is, is, is slightly ridiculous in and of itself because, because it is Shemmetic, 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 Mitic, okay? And so when you look up Shemetic meaning, it's the same. A branch or subfamily of the Afro-Asiatic family of languages that include Arabic, Hebrew, Aramaic, Amharic, and such ancient languages as Akkadian and Phoenician. You know, one of, uh, or, or of or pertaining to Shem, the oldest son of Noah. You know, so when we talk about Shem, why, why do they say sim? Because when it was transliterated from um, trans, trans, translated, transliterated from the Hebrew, Latin, and Greek didn't really have an understanding of the of the pronunciation or the enunciation of it. So instead of them using the H shem, they're using sim. Okay, but it's all one and the same. So you know when this per- particular celebrity says, "Yeah, you know, I can't be anti me." It's the same feelings I feel. Like, how can I be anti me for calling out somebody who, for calling out Revelations two nine and three nine? So now let's uh, let's let's talk about that real quick. Revelation two nine and three nine. I know thy works and tribulations and power and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy. Now he's talking about Israel there. And now he says, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Now, I mean, I've done this a long time ago. We talked about this like years ago when I was awakened, when 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 my first journey of awakening, of, of wokeness, if you will. Um, there's only one group of people that does a synagogue. I mean, it's the, this, this is not difficult to realize, difficult to understand, or hard to comprehend. It's just none of that, all right? It's just not. So let's go to 3 not. all right? Let's go to 3 not. Like, all of this is just in your face to tell you that, hey, wake up. It's time to wake up. It's time to wake up, everyone. Because he's doing, he's judging the nations as 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 it said he would. Behold, this is Revelation three nine, three and nine, three nine. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are Jews and are not, but do lie. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. That is beautiful. <laughs> that, that is beautiful. 
I don't know about nobody else, but if the people that are in the synagogue today who say they are Jews but are not but do lie, that's gonna that means that there's somebody else out there. That's why we already know. That's why when when people are coming talking crazy to us, we are no longer needing to discuss anything with them. That's why this is all occurring now, because we're raised up. We're being risen up. We are waking up. We have woke up. We are rising now. That brings me to Psalms 97. This is more good news for Israel, more and more good news. 97, the Lord reigneth. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of isles be glad thereof. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. A fire goeth before him, a burneth and, and burneth up his enemies round about. His lightnings enlightened the world. The earth saw and trembled. The hills melted like wax at the presence of the Lord. At the presence of the Lord of the whole earth, the heavens declare his righteousness, and all the people see his glory. Confounded be all they that serve graven images, that boast themselves of idols. <laughs> Worship him, all ye gods, little gods, little g gods. Zion heard and was glad. Here we go. Zion heard and was glad. And the daughters of Judah rejoiced because of thy judgment, O Lord. For thou, Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above all gods, little g gods. Ye that loved the Lord hate evil. That's where we are. He preserveth the souls of his saints. Yes, he does. He delivereth them out of the hand of the wicked. Yes, he has. Light is sown for the righteous and gladness for the upright in heart. Rejoice in the Lord, ye righteous, and give thanks at the, remember, rem, rem, at the remembrance of his holiness. This is where we are. This is the good news. Like, this is it's so funny how um, the Gentiles, all they, all they talk about is, this, the, you know, the, the destruction. Oh, it's going to be a war, uh, the Armageddon. Great. Great. Let there be. Let you all kill yourselves. Let your system implode and, and, and go to hell in the handbasket, quick, fast, in a hurry. Let it. Because at the end of the day, nothing is built on righteousness. If nothing else, the immediate feeling or sentiment in the earth amongst True Israel is that we're tired. We're tired. It's like we're sick and tired of being sick and tired. We're so tired that right now we're wanting, we're wanting Christ to come. And, you know, Christ said, you know, don't be wanting me to come because I'm, I'm going to put the wood to everybody, everybody going to mourn. You know, I, I don't know. You know, there's a lot of these things. I mean, these are the words, and we have to discern, and we have to use the Spirit, and we have to meditate on them and pray on them and ask for understanding and wisdom from these words because the Gentiles has mucked up the water. They poisoned the well for so long. And, and even today, they think that they got some hierarchy over us now. That's, the, that's, that's what's amazing to me now. It's like, you know, I get, for instance, you know, yesterday, Yesterday, it was a good day at work. I was doing some things, and all was well. I gave some kudos. You know, I acknowledged people. I, I pumped them up. Um, I, I treated them the way I wanted to be treated. Uh, my boss, uh, the executives, everyone. And, and they were all, yeah, good, oh, blah, blah, blah. And they were all rejoicing, okay? So I woke up this morning, you know, got my, was getting myself together, and 9 o'clock on the dock, my computer's ringing, and my boss is asking, you know, hey. I said, hey, how's it going? He said, it's going, it's going. I said, well, how you doing? He's like, well, I'm not doing very well. And I was like, well, what's wrong? Well, long story short, there's a situation where we're doing something for a um, higher 
a board member, and that board member uh, situation was dicey a little bit, um, and there was some questions the day before that should have been a, um, should have been asked, but it wasn't, and all of a sudden the blame start coming out. Well, you should have, would have, could have, could have, would have, should have, and, <laughs> and I'm listening and I'm going, hmm. So the spirits tested me first thing in the morning. So I said, okay. I said, all right, fair. I said, that's fair enough. I guess you're correct. I should have, would have, and I can't. And going forward, I will. That's how I said it. And we handled it. Me and me and my partner, who was uh, in it to win it with me, um, we sorted it out. Everything got sorted out, and at the end of the day, all was well, which I knew it would be. But that, but that, um, but that Gentile demon came out, right? And it tried to rile me up to say something crazy first thing in the morning. You know, um, kind of, kind of a shock to me first thing in the morning um, to see how I would react, right? That retaliation demon. So I was like, oh, whatever. So then later on, you know, night falls. Uh, all of a sudden, get this, get these, get this text, and it's, you know, hey, you know, I'm sorry, blah blah blah, you know, blah, 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 blah. and you know, I haven't replied back because his father said, no, 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 you let that marinate as you have, because you did the right thing. So my point to saying that, to sharing that, is that when you do the right thing today, when Israel does the right thing, when we're thinking the right way, when we're putting the energy and the effort and the frequency into doing righteous deeds, it always, that's an absolute, always works for us, always works always did work for us. The problem existed when the Gentiles came in because they had to legislate that working for them. But spiritually, it didn't work for them. That's why they had to legislate it. Yeah, they went and they killed a bunch of people. They raped, they lynched, whatever. And they all, in their spirit, they knew they were wrong. They never atoned for it, but they got off be a man's law. So the good news for us is that now us doing the right thing, the connection and source that we have and the frequency that we have to the Father today under this era, age, far greater than anything that the Gentiles have ever seen, anything that our forefathers have ever seen. We are we are what what our ancestors wanted us to be, wanted to be, and wanted us to be. We are the remnant. That's the good news. Yes, all the knowledge. Yes, we can. We still must study to show show ourselves approved. We still have to, you know, walk the walk and talk the talk. But the good news is, as long as we are doing righteous deeds in the name of the Father, then we will be okay. We will be saved out of it. That's just part of it. That's the story. That's the game. This is how we protect ourselves. We have to protect our spirit, you know, this this whole concept of Gentile Christianity and them trying to act like they, they hold some authority over it, it's gone. These fools, these fools, this foolish nation with a stammering tongue can no longer can no longer own our heritage. Matter of fact, they can't even hold it anymore. It's so heavy for them. It's too heavy for them. They don't even – they can't righteously discuss prophecy, let alone scriptures anymore. I mean, I've been heard – I mean, they talk – they're all over the place now. They they all talking about, you know, phages and, you know, nagas and, 
and they 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 try to talk about uh, uh, aboriginals, and they they're all over <laughs> the place. <laughs> and as Brother Judah said, it's too late. They can't. There's no way for them to now discuss these things spiritually, properly, righteously, because they're the people who have hidden all the books. They're the people who have done all these deeds, these wicked deeds. They're the people who have taken the deal, as Brother Yaakov says. They took the deal. And now out of the blue, here comes here comes this particular celebrity. And, you know, he threw this T-shirt on and everybody, you know, I think that was just the most high making him really dig, you know, really separate our people, you know, se- separate the two-thirds even more um, by having him wear that. So now people say, I can't stand him. I'll never hear. I'll never listen to him. And then, he, the, you know, no sooner than after that, he turns around and he's talking about the Ashkenazi. And lo and behold, now everybody's talking about the Ashkenazi. And the Ashkenazi can't even protect themselves. Why? Because the Ashkenazi is over there struggling right now, as they have been ever since this this Jabba Jaw, as Brother Levi says, this Jabba Jaw came into full effect. From the beginning of the plague, the plague affected them worse. And that, and they, they, they decided, because they took the deal, to take everything that they to ingest and impact themselves with everything that they could to try to thwart this plague. And today they're in disarray. So they ain't doing nothing. Over yonder. They don't they they can't even get their they can't get straight. They can't get straight. And again, this ain't me being mean to nobody or hating anybody, or being anti-myself, anti because that's stupid. We're too far in the game now to even entertain that folly. And to be honest with you, if somebody does, you know, if, if one of their Finkelsteins and, and you know, Thunderbrooks or whatever decides to come and have a real conversation, we can do so. We ain't scared about that. We don't care about their Talmud. We ain't worrying about that. We we got our Kabbalah. We got our Zohar. We have some understanding. We got our knowledge, and we're gaining every day. We're not scared of this. We used to be scared because we didn't have knowledge, and the Most High didn't have our back. Now he got our back. Our back. We got some wisdom. We got some knowledge. Hey. Come on, bring it. Bring it. But they won't do that. They'll be incensed. They, they will be upset. They will try to tell other people. They will try to get the foolish Christians to be upset against us. When, in fact, they can't even get upset because their history is all deviant. This is the whole point. All we are in the revealing time. We are in revelations. Revealing. This is all revelations. All of this stuff. Everything. That's why they are so. They're running around trying to trying to bat. Excuse me. Trying to batten down the hatches every time a a, a tarp a corner of tarp pops up. That's spewing out this knowledge. They're trying to go there and batten it down. They can't. They can't. They can't. That's why I said release the winds. These winds are strong now. They can't do nothing. They're too busy trying to protect themselves now, trying to protect their things, their materialism, trying to protect their um, vacation. They're so busy trying to protect their children, but little do they know, as in Egypt, so as now, people are going to die. And yes, the children are going to die. This ain't nothing new. 
Nothing new under the sun. I mean, shoot, they've been sacrificing their own children forever. Now they're going to be upset. Like, that's the whole abortion thing. It's insane to me. You're kidding me, right? You've been killing all these boys and girls, raping them, killing them, you know, fornicating with them, polluting them, and you're going to worry about an abortion? Get out of here with that madness. You don't get to take the the uh, the abortion morality high road. It's a wrap for you because your morality is done. Because, matter of fact, it's been revealed that you don't have no morality. But you know what the good news is? That we do. <laughs> See, we do. That's why it's funny how when we start trying to tell people, yes, tell them, tell people the truth, they don't want no parts of it because they can't handle the truth, a few good men. They can't handle the truth. So, you know, I mean, it, it's just, you know, the Gentiles is a hot mess. And that's why we that's why we do the things we do. That's why we're doing all this. That's why we, you know, Father got us all speaking, all studying. I mean, we're talking, we're, we, we have surpassed the conceptualization of the Gentiles completely. Like, we've. We've taken off. We're past them. Like, they can't even catch up. We, like, we, we, Usain, uh, we, we, Usain bolted them. We, Jesse Owens them. We, Carl Lewis them. We, rocket shipped them. Even though we ain't going to know that. But nevertheless, we have surpassed their fundamental intelligence. We're now bringing forth more information, more connection to our people than ever before. We got brothers and sisters talking and understanding tarot, what they call magic, which is all just power, energy and power to us, regain that heritage of that understanding. We're, to, we, we're gaining understanding of the connection of our forefathers before, during Pangea, pre-Diluvian age, we're st- this stuff is coming back to us. It, and these fools have always had this information, and they couldn't even connect the dots, which tells you that it was not for them. It was just not for them. And this ain't no hate. It just is what it is. Historically, there the history, you know, a couple, I think last week or the week before we talked about, you know, I just, it, their history starts with them as if, they were created as if they were created first. You understand that? Like 1 AD is when they want, They say history started. 1 AD, that's Roman madness. That had nothing to do with Israel. That had nothing to do with, uh, you know, the Ishmaelites or the Africans, so-called had nothing to do with that. Then they mix up the numbers and the dates and the times so that that way they can always keep us bamboozled into believing if they start their history at 1, right, 1 AD, then that means that they're first. And then they go to us, they say, oh, the Incas and, you know, the Aztecs, that was like uh, 300, 1300 B.C. And you're going, man, just see that. See, that's that buffoonery. That's that buffoonery that has that they have put over us for so long. They blinded us with this BS. So now we're in this revealing time. Their history is being shown. They're see, you know, they don't even want to talk about CRT, critical race theory. I don't even care about it because I know the history. I know where to go. But it's a shame that they don't even want to – they still will not atone by telling the truth. That's how you get this off your chest. You you either write it down, whatever is bothering you, you write it down, or you speak it in the, into, the, into the spirit realm and let it go. They won't ever let it go, so they're holding on tight, and this is why they're going to die holding it on. This is why they're going to die holding on. 
and all the two thirds that's running around talking about Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. That's who that's who we need to be praying to and worshiping. See, that's their narrative. I don't mind anybody doing whatever they're going to do, but just acknowledge whose narrative you're using. Where I sit in my research, this their Bible, basic instructions before leaving earth, their Bible is a book of a people. Oh, yeah, until they decided to put this whatever they call New Testament into it. But even still, yet they're still talking about the people. The whole point is that Israel will will be in captivity, will have to learn, the, the will have a long walk back to the, they're going to be with the Father, they're going to go in captivity, they're going to have a long walk back to the Father, they're going to be redeemed, they're going to get salvation, and they're going to be in the kingdom. That's the story. All the extra in between that is how to walk. So Christ came and said, listen, you're going to have to walk this walk like me. I'm over here going to walk this walk as righteous as I can be, and I'm going to die because of it. So you're going to have to be willing to walk this walk and die. And many of our people, many of the Israelites took that walk, took that journey, chose that. But they get dissed. Ah, the people, don't worry about them. Worry about us over here in this church that never walked the walk, that never was in captivity, that never learned anything, that's still talking about, like, like their whole con their whole concepts, the whole dogmas is still the same as it was during the Council of Nicaea. They're still worrying about the Trinity. So instead of them dealing with their atonement and dealing with what they did while they were in their blessing, what they do? They said to hell with it, we gonna do replacement theology on them. We're going to drop this replacement theology. And the funny thing is, is that everybody who, who is part of that still doesn't even, doesn't even see how that is the, uh, that's the red flag. That's the red herring. Replacement theology. Yeah, the church replaced them. Well, well where is that in the book? In your book, where, where is that in any scriptures that the church is going to replace Israel? Because if that's the case, now you're telling that the mo- you're telling the Most High he's a liar, right? Because he had a covenant. The whole issue with Christianity, the whole issue with these issues, and all the rest of these phony, baloney religions, so called, is that they think that the God of Israel. The God of, of, excuse me, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob changes. So he, he's going to he changes his mind. Oh, you know what? I made this covenant. He, they think that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are just like them. That can renege on their treaties, renege on their covenants. So he said, I've made a covenant with you, Abraham, and the, and the, and the Gentiles said, that's over. We did the New Testament. We're going to replace you guys. Our God doesn't say that. It's now everyone. But wait, it doesn't say that. He said that he's going to Israel. Don't worry about that. Let me tell you. Let me inform you on this. Okay, while we were blind. Okay, I guess that makes sense. Okay, we can't say nothing about it. I mean, he is the, the, the pastor. Little did we know they were leading us astray. Little did we know that prophecy that was happening was already going on. The whole time, the whole time they are they are doing prophecy, or they are um, they are they are making prophecy there happen at that moment in the negative against Israel. We were so blind that we didn't even realize that they were against us. They were our enemies. Because the replacement theology of the church is our enemy. As a matter of fact, that church is an enemy to us. As a matter of fact, all of it's an enemy 
to Israel. Why? Because it took all of them taking Israel's heritage. That's why we talk about the good news. That's why we were, you know, the history and 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 the the, the secular history and the biblical history. Hey, that's what that's studying to show yourself approved. If you're not doing that, then whatever you'll be bamboozled, hoodwinked, and led astray. Just is what it is. Because that's the part that you have to study to show thyself approved. Once you do that, then you can get onto other stuff like Agartha. You can get into other stuff, other books, like the Pseudepigrapha, like the Nag Hammadi. You won't be tripped up by Gentiles by going into the Zohar and the Kabbalah. You won't be scared of Rabbi Finkelstein and his madness. Because then you'll say, oh, the Ashkenazi, they're the converts. They are not Israel. I mean, this isn't even hard. When you do the history, the, when you do the historical dives, the historical work, is what this is about. Israel, you have to study to show yourself approved. You have to. You got to listen to your brothers and sisters. You got to. You, you don't even have to. You. You do, you do not have to listen to the Gentiles, but when it comes to anything, just like you would with, your, with, with our people, you have to be respectful. Because there's many a brother that I don't really have time to listen to because all they're talking about is, is uh, Africa, 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 Africa. And that's foolish in itself as well because so you're telling me that the God of the universe forgot that he made the Americas? That this has no bearing on nothing in his in his world, nothing. It's all in Africa. That's stupid. That's someone who is either a ignorant or b got an agenda. Because all of the scriptures, again, there's over there's 101 references to corn. Somebody explain to me where corn was in history. You understand, like. Corn is not native to the three parts, period. Period. They didn't have corn in Africa. They didn't have corn in in Europe. They didn't have they didn't have corn in Asia. Still don't. Maybe, maybe now, whatever. But they just didn't have it. It's native to the Americas. But the but the Bible's referencing scriptures referencing Corn like nobody's business. Oh, yeah, we're going to get this corn. We're going to do this corn. We're going to get this corn. We're going to make this corn. And I'm going, I mean, are no one, no one's doing any due diligence. No one is willing to do, what, no one is willing to critically think. See, that's the difference of today and yesteryear. That's the difference. This is the difference before, this is the difference after, 2019 A.D. and 2019 B.C., okay? So everything before 2019, we didn't critically think about this stuff. Everything after 2019, we are critically thinking about this stuff. And the more we critically think, the more we connect the dots, the more wisdom we get, the more the society of the Gentiles crumble, all of them. And Gentile don't don't just necessarily mean white people, so called. There are plenty of Negro looking Gentile. The whole thing. I mean, I saw this. Uh, they got uh, um, they got uh, capital. The what is it? What is it called? It's uh, black capitalists. And I'm thinking to myself, if this ain't some tomfoolery right here, brothers and sisters. Why will we be capitalists? Capitalist capitalism is founded on us as the commodity. They capitalized on people, not just any people, the Israelite people. So why 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 are we even playing their stupid game? It's dumb. We are a communal people. We are a communal people. We bartered, we traded, we took care of each other. 
something that the Gentiles don't ever do. And now they got to pay, which is also our good news, because they have to pay for that. There's so much, so, so much that they have done in this, in this, in the last age. I'm going to say it like that. So much that they have done in the last age that they have not paid for. And I'm going, damn. Why don't we want payment for that? I'm not even talking about reparations. That's a part of it. They won't even pay for that. They won't pay. They haven't, they won't, and they can't pay for anything that they've done in the last age against Israel. That's why they did for theology, because if they can replace Israel, then nobody will think about Israel, nobody will think about all the things that they've done. But aha, the most high, he kept tabs, all praises. He had them keep dossiers, write books, leave breadcrumbs. So when we wake up and we get this understanding and we come back from being blinded to see, we get to, we get to know the truth. And what will the truth do? Set us free. This is 100% freedom of the mind, of the bondage that they have put us in because we were blind. That's the good news that the Father wants us to know. He has unblinded us. We can see now. So utilize that for good measure at the end. Get as much understanding, much knowledge, much of much of the Father that you can. Because there will come a time where there will be a famine in the land because the Gentiles have to pay. And we're still in their system. You know, I, I, I see I see the uh you know, I see a lot of a lot of people, a lot of camps, they, they, they still, you know, they talk and they just they're just now getting into the history of it, you know. Like um the Russian icons and you know, they're talking about the Europeans, the blacks and you yeah, okay. I am happy. I am ecstatic at the fact that there are more people getting into um, this history because that's how we have to do it. I already said that, and I know that. But if you're doing it with hate in your heart, it don't matter. You're just a Gentile. You're just a Gentile. We ain't got to hate them. We just don't have to. They They are of no consequence. Why? Because they have no conscience. Now, who am I talking about? I'm talking about the Gentiles. It doesn't matter, again, if you're black or white. So if you are a Gentile, black or white, so-called, we're just going to use these stupid colors that they gave, that they have uh, adjectived us with. But if, they, if you are a Gentile, you are of no consequence because you have no conscience. Israel, the Israelites, have the conscience. That's the spirit. And you can look around and see. And then what some people say, well, no, I go to church and I got the spirit. No, you don't. No, you don't. You don't have the spirit. You may have a spirit. Oh, you think you know? Yes, I do. I absolutely unequivocally do. I do. Yeah, I do. I got no I, I got no qualms about it. And why should I hide that? I really do. I I. I, I tap into that spirit, and there's many of us that do, and we should be we shouldn't boast about it, but we should be strong in that. I mean Solomon strong, he ain't go around like you know I don't know if I got this spirit. no, he didn't do that. David didn't do that, none of the prophets did it. Moses certainly didn't do it. Christ certainly didn't do it, so why should I do it? If I feel that I have tapped into the to the spirit, then I need to utilize that. I need to be strong in that. I need to have that as my strength and my fortress. That's the good news with Israel because it this stuff is for us. <laughs> this is ours. So we should use it for us. We should use it for us. We don't need to be soft with it no more. This is the fear that they have 
and that fear is warranted because when we get it, they're done. They're done. They're done. This is the whole kit and caboodle. They're done because they're not stopping me. They're not stopping other brothers. We're still rolling. We're gonna, we won't stop even when the power goes out. Why? Because we are who? The Israelites. So their power going to go out. Unlucky. Unlucky. You ain't got your oil. You ain't got your oil. You ain't got your oil. Let that be a lesson. That's why we're here today while the power is still on to tell you, hey, get right, Gentiles. Because the good news is Israel is resurrect, resurrecting. So if you, you want to do, oh, you, you're just perversing the gospel. You don't know what you're talking about. There's some the strange doctrines going on. What? You, the strange and perverse doctrines is Christianity. That's strange. That's perverse. Those doctrines are strange and perverse. Yet the Christian, in their boastfulness and their pride, their ignorance of pride, too, because they don't know nothing. So they got this ignorance going on, and they're proud of it. I'm proud to be a Christian because Jesus the Christ, he's the person who died for me on the cross to forgive my sins. What? 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 You murdered him. He did. You murdered the man. You murdered our brother. Why did he he ain't die for you? He didn't die for you. He died for the salvation of Israel at this time. And if you want to be part of Israel, then you need to get on the Israelite train, not the Israeli plane. That will fall to the sky and be done. Not the Gentile car that's going to crash into a tree and be done. Israelite train that's going to fly over the ley line of all the continents, under the continents, under the sea. That's why. That's why it's so funny to me. It's funny to me because I'm going. All this history, all this knowledge, all this understanding, all this good news, and like it, it, here's the other thing: if the if the uh, if the two nine and three nine people were truly Israel, they'd be all about this. This would like th- this whole concept of the resurrection of Israel would they would they would be all over it. I mean, she was just talking about Israel, but they they mad at the they mad at the Gentiles' book, so they want to use a different book, and they want to talk about how that book. Uh, I mean, how the how G, they want to go against Jesus. Okay, I, and I'm thinking to myself, how does that how does any of that make sense? When I look at this, let, let me let me just read this one real quick. Which one am I? I mean, because they call themselves Judah, right, Jews, right? And and watch this, Isaiah 2, right, Isaiah 2, 4. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. This is, let me go to three, and many people shall go and say, come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. So, I mean, Jacob is Israel. Israel is Jacob. These fools over there talking about they are Israel. So why aren't they involved? Why aren't they excited about this good news? About the resurrection of Israel? Because it's not them. Because they already got their 
their their heaven, their kingdom on earth. They already got their kingdom on earth. They don't get to get it again. Just the same as the Gentiles. The Gentiles, the Ashkenazi took the deal that Satan or the demons tried to tempt Christ with. <coughs> Excuse me. But the Ashkenazi took the deal. <clears throat> and the Gentile took the deal from the Ashkenazi. They didn't even get to need to go straight to the to the source of the deal. They went to the Ashkenazi and got the deal. That's why they keep giving money. That's why the whole world gives money to them. Because they took the deal. If you bow down to me, I will give you the world. Ashkenazis have the world. The Gentiles go to the Ashkenazi and bow down to them. <clears throat> it's just it's just it's the way this is this is this is this it is just the way this has worked. Because they that's why Revelation two nine through nine says that they're gonna come and worship at your feet because we ain't taking the deal. Because our deal is better. Our deal is with the Father. But they try to tell us that our deal, we ain't got no deal. You, 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 you niggas ain't got no deal. What you talking about? You niggas ain't got no deal. What you talking about? Matter of fact, if you guys want a deal, come on over here and deal with us. And many of us did. And many of us perished. And, and that celebrity is talking about that. That's what that celebrity is talking about. He's saying, yo, we, we took this deal, and this deal is, 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 is horrible. What did he say? I took the deal, and it, I didn't even get a Happy Meal or something crazy. Talking about ish. That's all this brother's been talking about. But because he took the deal, he couldn't say nothing. But once you get to, to once you get to that number, that magic number, billionaire, you can say what you want. He, he was talking to Pierce Morgan, and Pierce Morgan's over there trying to chide him, and he just asked the question. He said, "Pierce, how much money you make?" And Pierce said, "A lot, a, a lot less than you." He said, "Right." Damn, that's the most hot. That the way it was. All I keep seeing out of his brother, even though. He a little off. I still believe it. I I see a great strength, and that's the Most High. Most High only. He the only one that got the strength. And matter of fact, it's funny because that's what he's talking about. But I, I just he took the deal. Now the Most High can tear up a tear up because it's his. It's his. It's, ultimately, it's his to do. But he took the deal. You can't take the deal. You can't be a billionaire and not take the deal. It just doesn't work, okay? But nevertheless, you know, I ain't going back and forth with him. But I just thought that I just thought all that stuff was interesting because I'm like, yo, this this is what is happening. And and the two nine folks and three nine folks, they struggling. And this, this right here, I what is this? So this is Isaiah 54, okay? And I'm just going to go to the end, 54 and 17, because this this is our strength right here. This is our strength. This is what we have to know. And it, this is this is what's happening. This is this is what we know, but this is what we have to really, really be knowing and and using daily. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So, let's look at that. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. 
you can't judge me. Only God can judge me. You why are you judgmental? You, because you have come against us. So we get to judge you. As long as it, we are not doing what you're doing, we get to judge you. If we were doing what you were doing and judging you, then we'd be a Gentile. We'd be like you. And then you get to judge us back because we're in the revealing time, which means that if we did do something like that, karma will get us. But as long as we judge righteously by showing the fruits are rotten or telling the truth of the law, says it right here, and every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. Just like today, you know. Had some judgment on me. You don't know what you're doing, baby. All of a sudden, you know what? You know, I did. I, you know, I was a little harsh. I don't mean. I apologize. I'm sorry, but you know, this is our heritage. This ain't the Gentiles, because again, the Gentiles don't have that heritage. They are not allowed. They are not allowed. I'm gonna say one more time. They are not allowed to judge. Because they are doing, they have secret combinations. They have agendas. They do things to get things. Okay? But there ain't nothing we want other than the Father, other than the kingdom to come, other than to watch the Gentiles be at, to be uneasy to watch them see who we are. That's all we want. We don't care about what they do. We're not here to worry about them. That's the, that's the joke of Christianity. Christianity wants everybody to worry about them. Why? That was never how it was. Israel didn't care about what the other people were doing what the Gentiles were doing. The Gentiles were caring about what Israel was doing. That's why, you know, if you're not studying to show yourself approved, if you're unwilling to learn this truth, if you can't get with the fact that Christian sanity is full of lies, death, uh, raping, murder, and treachery, well, then you are a Gentile, and that's fine. That's fine. This walk is not for everybody. If you feel that the Christian walk is the walk that you want to do or you feel that the ish walk is the walk or the Hindu walk and, and, or whatever, even though we know Buddhists, the, the, original, the original Hindus were black or, or Israel, the original Buddhists was Israel, everybody got our stuff, their stuff from us. That's Psalms 83. Oh, that's a Psalms 83 war. What? What? I mean, again, they don't even want to acknowledge that a slave trade happened. These are the same people who want to acknowledge dumb diversus, which is their papal creed. This is the same people whose pope just said that he don't want to be known as the vicar of Christ you know, a couple years ago. These are the same people who say they don't want critical race theory taught in their schools because it could make some of the kids feel some sort of way about grandmama and granddaddy. These are the same people who lynch us, the same people who honor the Tuskegee Airmen, but when the Tuskegee Airmen were here, were alive, the, 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 the Air Force treated, the military treated them like slaves. This is this is why it's <laughs> this is why we don't care what they got going on anymore. This is this is the separation. See, they tried to separate us by calling us names and treating us bad, and they separated us, right? Jim Crow, civil rights, all separated us. Then when we prospered, they came in destroyed, right? Then they were like, shoot, if we let them separate, if we keep them separate, they'll just prosper. And they'll usher in or they'll hasten our demise by gaining what? Knowledge, right? 
So they said, we need to mix them together. So now all the racism and all that stupidness, they, they've screwed up. They're done. They mix. We're all mixed now. The only being, the father is the only person, only being that's going to be able to separate everybody now. This is the wheat and the tares. We're telling you we're in the revelation. This is not hard to see anymore. And if you don't understand prophecies or prophecy and you're still stuck with Christian prophecy like the rapture, you are a fool. That's all I can say. I mean, literally, and that's not me being mean. That just is what it is. Why would our father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, see, a lot of people miss that. A lot of Gentiles miss that. Oh, God and Jesus, God and Jesus. No, 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 hold tight. But what God and what Jesus are we talking about? Because last I read and all the scriptures that I read, and, and, and study, it's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Sure, Adam. Sure, Methuselah. It's the Mechizedek order. But you can't even get to the Mechizedek order without understanding the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So the Gentiles, they, they do away with that. Ah, we ain't doing that. But yet they want to use they want to use Jacob, even though scriptures all talk about Jacob, Israel. They want to use Israel for themselves. They want to create their own little Israel. They want to create their own little kingdom, which they did, which is fine. And it's only fair. This was their turn. They, this, Esau got his blessing, right? He's all the sinners of Esau, right? So he gets his blessing. He, he wanted control. Of the, he wanted his kingdom on earth. Right then, right then. He didn't want it. He didn't have no patience to wait and do the right thing. He wanted it then, instant gratification. And so he did it. Now, hey, there's no complaints. Don't be mad when all this is coming down and all this is, is changing and we get next. Shoot, we've been patient on the side of the court. We, we up next. We're up next. This is like basketball. We up next. Don't be trying to hog the court. Can. Can. It's over. It's a wrap. It's done. So, I mean, when you just take a look at what's happening in the world, you can see that this is all done. I mean, at the end of the day, there's so many, you know, I keep saying, I keep posing the question, if these people are the people of God, why don't they come and intercede on behalf of the people? I mean, wouldn't that only make sense? Isn't that what Israel did? Isn't? I mean, how come Israel isn't going, hey, uh, Putin, hey, uh, Biden and everybody else, she or we or whatever that dude from China's name is and everybody else, hey, what I'm going to do, because I'm Rabbi Finkelstein, I'm going to go into the into my little quarters, into the temple, the Dome of the Rock or whatever they, wherever they, I'm going to go over to this fake wailing wall, right? I'm going to go over to the wailing wall, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to intercede on behalf of the world, and I'm going to talk to God. Because, shoot, that's what, that's what Israel did. But it was the word of Israel, not the whole world. And so because they are not part of Israel, they are part of the world, they can't intercede. Therefore, we can already, we can, based on that little bit of knowledge, we can ascertain that they aren't the people, which means that there's somebody else. There's other people out there which means just because you know that you Israel and just because you're doing the right thing by Israel within, within Israel doesn't mean you can't slip, trip, and fall. And that's where we are. We have to maintain who we are and maintain the walk. We're on this narrow road, and it's not easy. Like the Gentiles, oh, God is love. God is love. Why would he want to kill the babies? Why would he? Shoot. I mean, you obviously don't read the, the Old Testament. You obviously don't believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Because they, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob have been putting the wood to many men, men, women, and children that went against his people. That's why, you know, we, we just have to take our time 
Be patient, endure, and persevere. And when we got Gentiles coming towards us, trying to have conversation and trying to act like they know something, we just need to be humble in the face of the in the face of the Lord, in the face of the Father, so that the Father, the Father's Spirit, can attack them. This is where we are. This is the next phase. We are in the revelation. It's all coming out. Our power will be stronger. Their power is weakened. It is no longer time for them. Their turn is over. And I know, again, people don't want to believe that. They think that it's all about Christianity and Jesus when we know there were no J's. And be Yaha, yeah, it would be Yeshua, Yahweh Shah. Right? But the Gentiles just say Jesus. Right? And then they add this Christianity dogma into it. But if you do history, I keep harping on this, if you review history, you will see that who was out in front on the demise of Israel, who was out in front on the demise of, of, of Israel over in the Americas and in Europe. Europe, the Inquisition, the church. The Americas, the church. And somehow, some way, we have been indoctrinated through the slave Bible and through Massa to believe only that of which he wants us to believe. And it's strong. I get it. But see, those days are done. We get to be revealed. We get to, we get to be revealed. They get to be revealed. All the deeds get to be revealed. We are in Revelation. And it's funny because, you know, 6 and 8, Revelation 6 and 8, they talk about, oh, you know, you know, you know America's not in, America's not in uh, 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 prophecy. Well, that's because you guys are dumb. It certainly is in prophecy. It certainly is. And it talks about, and you, he was, you all came over here from another, from the three parts and was given power over the fourth part. But, you know, this is what they do. They, they change everything. They they change it to uh, not the fourth part, but a fourth part, you know, in their new additions. We just got to be smart. We just got to be smart and not really entertain these people no more. And if you are in it and you're trying to, um, and you're trying to be part of their network still, you're going to find yourself struggling soon if you're already, if you're not already. You're going to find yourself struggling because that is done. That has been judged. Judgment is here. Let me let me just end with this right quick because, I mean, people people don't even understand. It's like they, they, they don't get history. They don't get history. They think everything happened so long ago. No, this stuff is happening now. God doesn't change. The Father doesn't change. So that means what he did in the past, he will do again. This is how, this is how you know who he is. If, how could you know who he is if he changed all that's stupid? That's Gentile. That is so dumb. It's literally dumb. It's stupid. I mean, get away from it. It's just dumb. I don't know. I just It doesn't even make sense. Anyway. We're going to end it with this because people need to understand why we're in the revelation, why we're in these times. Genesis 15, 13, and 14. And he said unto Abram, know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they shall afflict them 400 years. And also, here's the key, and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge. That's the revealing. Because in judgment, you're revealing. Ju- revealing is judgment. I, I, I found this out about you. Now I get to judge you. And afterwards shall they come out with great substance. Okay? 
uh, you know, people go, well, the land, sure, the land, not theirs. Well, yeah, the land's not ours because the Gentiles, it was given to the Gentiles because of Israel's BS or disobedience. So the land was taken from them and given to the Gentiles. So the land wasn't theirs anymore. Like these things, you got to read for for interpretation. You have to read for substance. You got to be able to understand these things. You got to get away from Christianity. Do you know? You can pray. One of the good things about Christianity is it it it, it does teach you how to pray. Okay, but prayer and meditation, fasting, is all in one. And those are the things that, when when done properly and with the and done with the right people, by the right people, for the Father, can move mountains. You can bring down civilizations. This is what we've been doing. There's brothers and sisters out there, fasting and praying and meditating and doing the things that they need to do uh, against the Gentiles. Been doing this now four or five four or five years now on a continual. Strong about it. And and you know, Christians out here, oh, you know, Jesus loves us. Yes he do. Because the Bible tells me so what? Take everything out of context. But hey, all that aside, that doesn't even matter because the good news is that Israel's resurrection time is here. Israel's, uh, Ezekiel 37, the dry bones are now got the, the, the breath, the spirit has been blown into them, into us. So now we get our spirit back. Then he's going to put sinews on us. He's going to build our bodies back up, right? He said he's going to heal us. He ain't healing the church who's been killing everybody. He's going to heal us. And then we're going to stand up a mighty, exceedingly mighty army as soldiers for the Most High, like his angels, like his forces. There's so, so much stuff that's happening. I'm just touching on a little bit. I don't know nothing. Who the heck am I, right? But at the end of the day, I can only tell you that uh, Israel, the brothers and sisters that are that are about about it and they know it, and they know who they are, you know. I, this thing is changing, and I mean, it's changing big time. And the success of this change is all about the father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Nothing else. Nothing else. I mean, history is showing us who we are. We taking it. We rolling with it. We're coming up with so much other information that the Father is allowing us to have, stuff that we didn't even fathom three years ago. Two years, last year we wouldn't even have fathomed it, fathomed it. We made connections to everything, everything. We have found out the truth, not the whole truth, but a portion of the truth. So Israel just, just know that uh, all is well, and you, you just maintain, persevere, and endure because Jacob's trouble is over. Esau's trouble is just now beginning. For alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. But he, Jacob, Israel, shall be saved out of it. Hallelujah. 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 This is how we're doing it now. All praises to the Father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Big ups to the family. Israel's in the midst. Be at peace. It is no longer our trouble. Shalom.